Hello everybody, I am Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-303, The Doorman. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-303. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. As SCP-303 has not yet been known to travel beyond the boundaries of Site- <coughs> The entire area of Site is currently considered SCP-303's containment area. All rooms in Site are to be altered where possible so as to have two entrances separated by a distance of 10 meters or line of sight. Personnel are to be distributed evenly throughout the facility with available radio or intercom contact so that encounters may be resolved quickly. Personnel who witness SCP-303 are to be submitted for immediate psychiatric evaluation. All SCP objects housed at Site <coughs> since before June 4, 2010 are to be transferred to Site <coughs> B one at a time. Each SCP object will be transferred again to Site <coughs> A once it can be verified that SCP-303 has not migrated from Site 13 with it. Once SCP-303 either migrates to Site B or remains present at Site B, once all SCPs in question have been transferred to Site A, containment procedures will be updated as appropriate. Description: Witnesses describe SCP-303 as a nude, sexless, emaciated humanoid figure with reddish-brown skin. Instead of normal facial features, its head is dominated by an extremely large mouth which bears a set of oversized human teeth. It continually vocalizes a wheezing tone, loud enough to be heard from the other side of most solid doors. All individuals who have had encounters with SCP-303 are capable of describing it in full, including individuals who have not physically seen any part of it. SCP-303 will periodically materialize behind any closed door, hatch, or other entryway barrier opposite a sentient observer, chosen by unknown means. SCP-303 will then remain behind the door for an indeterminate amount of time. Any individual attempting to open the door or barrier experiences intense, paralyzing fear that lasts until SCP-303 dematerializes, either on its own or to avoid being directly seen by another observer. The source of this fear is not clear, but appears to be similar in nature to arachnophobia or ophidiophobia, originating on a pre-conscious genetic level. Data expunged. Analysis indicates that SCP-303 is not, in fact, purposefully inducing fear in the affected individuals. SCP-303 does not allow itself to come into direct visual contact with any observer, and has never allowed any one individual to view more than 10% of its form. When the door or other entryway barrier is partially or completely transparent, SCP-303 will materialize in an orientation that leaves 10% or less of its body visible, or cause effects of fog or frost on the transparent surface to achieve the same effect. If SCP-303 is approached from a direction in which there is not a solid object or door breaking the line of sight, it will dematerialize before direct visual contact is made. Any electronic or complex mechanical devices that SCP-303 encounters are temporarily disabled. SCP-303 has made no recorded attempt to physically or verbally engage any observer. How SCP-303 arrived at Site is not known at this time. SCP-303's first recorded appearance was on March 1, 2010. It is suspected that SCP-303 was inadvertently transferred along with or manifested by another SCP on Site. All SCPs on Site are being re-examined accordingly. Incident Log 303-A Incident 303-1 Agent <coughs> was showering in her private quarters bathroom when she became aware of the presence of SCP-303 on the opposite side of the shower curtain. It was wheezing extremely loudly. Startled by the discovery, she accidentally struck the shower curtain, causing it to sway outwards. The curtain partially wrapped around SCP-303, 
revealing that it was less than half a meter from the curtain, standing erect and facing the shower. Agent <coughs> reports spending approximately the next three hours sobbing in the shower quietly as not to disturb SCP-303. Agent <coughs> reported that the wheezing stopped very suddenly, at which point in time she was able to exit the shower. Incident 3033 Agent <coughs> encountered SCP-303 inside the site <coughs> second floor break room. He was attempting to obtain coffee creamer from the counter cabinet when he heard loud wheezing emanating from the cabinet and was overtaken by overwhelming fear. Agent <coughs> later reported that SCP-303 was huddled in the cabinet in the fetal position. Agent <coughs> claimed to be certain of the information despite failing to open the cabinet door. Later, when the cabinet was examined, one container of powdered coffee creamer was missing. Note, this is the first recorded instance of SCP-303 removing an object from a scene. Incident 3036. Dr. was discovered dead from dehydration in a second floor storage room. It is estimated that Dr. spent up to five days in the storage room before being discovered. A small 4 meter by 4 meter decompression chamber separated the storage room from the adjoining hallway. SCP-303 occupied the decompression chamber for the duration of Dr. <coughs> isolation in the storage room, disallowing entry from either direction and making it impossible for Dr. <coughs> to leave. Test Log 303-A A team consisting of Dr. <coughs> researchers, <coughs> four security personnel, and four D-Class personnel were assigned to be dispatched to any reported incident of SCP-303's materialization in order to immediately perform on-site testing. These logs take place at the door to room from the first floor hallway. SCP-303 was reported to be within room Test 3031 One male D-Class personnel, D-3031, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be transferred to SCP <coughs> duty for non-compliance. He refused, citing extreme fear. Test 3032. One male D-Class personnel, D-3031, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. He refused, claiming that if he were to do so, that SCP-303 would data expunged. He was terminated on the spot. Test 3033. One female D-Class personnel, D-3032, that had witnessed the termination of D-3031, was ordered to open the door and threaten that she would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. She refused, claiming that if she opened the door, that SCP-303 would data expunge. Researcher <coughs> was visibly shaken by this claim. D-3032 was not terminated. Test 3034. One female D-Class personnel, D-3032, was ordered to open the door. One male D-Class personnel, D-3033, was given one combat knife by security personnel and ordered to data expunge until D-3032 opened the door. After two hours of data expunge, D-3032 died from blood loss. D-3032 made no attempt to open the door. Addendum, May 1st, 2010. SCP-303 appears to have claimed the second floor storage room as its own. It has so far disallowed any personnel entry to the room since April 5, 2010. It leaves periodically to acquire Foundation property, which is then moved into the second floor storage room. To date, the following list describes all non-classified items taken by SCP-303. 1. <coughs> cryotube Three sets of standard Foundation surgical equipment. Two D-Class research cadavers. One gasoline-powered generator. A variety of chemicals, including large quantities of tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine, among others. One container of powdered coffee creamer. In addition to this, a number of classified materials have been obtained by SCP-303. Staff are still attempting to determine what specific purposes SCP-303 may have for these materials.
Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and would like to hear more, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, if there are any SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.